What is going on, everybody? DJ Minds here, and I have to say I am extremely excited to be talking with Sumi from Dynex. How are you doing this morning? Hello. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So I have to say, I've looked into Dynex, and there's a lot of exciting things to talk about. What could you briefly tell us about Dynex? So basically, in short, what we are building is we are trying to build the largest decentralized supercomputing network in, in the world. That's basically our goal. And um, why are we doing what we are doing? It's basically uh, demand driven, because if you look at, at what's happening out there, the demand for computing power, especially because of artificial intelligence, is increasing and increasing and increasing rapidly. And we are very, very worried, and not only we, but in general, researchers around the world, that we will not be able to, to, to keep up with this demand and to deliver even faster computers over time. And that's why we are building Dynex. And that is why I fell in love. Uh, I think it was about a month ago, someone's like, man, you got to look into Dynex. I checked out your website and I was like, wow, this, this is so interesting for me. Anything AI, anything rendering, um, co computational power. And so I saw on your website, it said the world's first decentralized neuromorphic supercomputer platform. What, what does that mean? I know I kind of looked into what neuromorphic meant, but how does that yeah. work for Dynex? Yeah, I know there's, there's a lot of technical terms. Um, we are actually working on uh, redesigning the site and make it a little bit more customer friendly and more understandable. But in, in a nutshell, what we are doing is we are basically utilizing a concept of an alternative computing paradigm, right? So because we don't believe that with existing uh, computing technology, we will achieve the, the speed that's, that's required to compute around there. And there has been a lot of research around, you know, computing with light, computing with, uh, with, with, with water, computing with DNA, computing with memory stores, for example, right? Yeah. Um, all these and quantum computing, obviously, right? But the problem with quantum computing is it's very low scale at the moment, still very few qubits available. And it's also not, not very practical to have a quantum computer at home. So there are other approaches, and we found the approach to utilize neuromorphic computing, which is basically compared to rather than having zeros and ones in neuromorphic computing, you have basically voltages from minus one volt to plus one volt, right? And they can go wow. have basically any, any, any value in between minus one and plus one, which eventually leads to a situation that you can build computers which are inherently parallel, right? And that's what we uh are trying to achieve here uh, that, that's a way better answer than i thought okay so how does dynex fit into that as a miner so i have a graphics card um, and what is what would be different on mining for dynex compared to anywhere else yeah so when we started dynex we actually had no intention to make this a crypto project that project dynex was actually a research project to create a computing system which is faster or or not even not faster but more efficient than other computing systems right mm -hmm. and so we started off we built it our own we, we bought uh, 1500 fpgas right we tried our our technology worked out great but at the same time we figured out okay how how can we scale because 1500 fpgas was already hard to get a handle on it but what if yeah. you want a hundred thousand right or even more, and that was the time, and there was also even a shortage of FPGAs around the world. So at the same time, I realized, that, wait a second, right? There's look at all the computing power going out there at, at Ethereum, for example, and they are going, they are changing to proof of stake, right? They're moving away from proof of work. So there's a lot of 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 GPU power be, becoming dormant, and what are they doing? All they are doing is is hashing which is basically brute force randomized hashing calculations. Right? This is from a mathematical perspective, not sophisticated. And especially, it's in our opinion, it's a waste of energy. I mean, of course, it's important uh, to, 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 uh, to, to run, uh, to run miners, mining and, and generate hashes for, for blockchains. But what if you could utilize most of this energy to actually calculate something useful? And that's what we said, you know, let's try it. Right? And so we said, okay, we're going to launch this whole thing that was in September. And we actually launched it as a proof of work coin with the option that users could say, you know what, I'm going to run uh, also some, some, some meaningful computations. And we looked at it and we became confident that that can actually scale. So in December 1st, 
uh, we launched Dynex Solve. And basically the difference is if you, let's say, mine or used to mine Ethereum, for example, you were doing hashing and the, all the calculations you did are being thrown away. You just confirm a block or not. And with Dynex, you use 95% approximately of your GPU to calculate real world problems. Wow. What a way to put it. So let's just pretend it takes me an hour to get a block. It, it wouldn't, right? But let's just pretend it took an hour to hit the block. And uh, everything before hitting that actual block would be wasted. And you're saying Dynex has figured out a way, instead of wasting that, to actually use that to our benefit? Correct. I mean, to, to up to like 95% is, 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 is approximately what's being meaningful. 5% we still need for, for, for hashing. Right, <clears throat> but ninety-five percent of that energy being used is 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 being used for something reasonable. And I give you an example, maybe that helps you to understand yeah. it a little bit better. So we have a customer, and he's in the construction business, and he's basically it's like you can, you can call it like a like an architectural uh, company on steroids. So they're using uh, artificial intelligence and, and and all other different kind of things in order to make some some really good projects. And they had to build a pedestrian walkway. And the customer said, you know what? I want a walkway and I want a roof which has like a really strange organic shape. Okay? And they're sitting there and said, okay, the roof needs colors. Right? So in a normal use case, the statical designer would sit down and would say, okay, how do we put these columns that this whole thing is stable? Right? And he would sit there and try and use evolutionary learning, and I don't know what, he would sit there for a month, right, in order to really position these columns so perfect that you can basically have a stable roof, right? And then he came to us and said, okay, you know, why don't you run it through the Dynex platform? He sent us the, the, the problem. And then we pushed it into the into the network, and one minute later, there was a result, we, and he, he downloaded the result. I had actually no idea what exactly he was doing, and then after one hour, he came back and, and he said, you know, he said, I mean, you guys, Dynex just found a so innovative a new way of how to position those columns. No human would have ever thought of. It is perfection, right? So it took wow. him one minute. Now we have a building and he can fly to Jordania and, and, and actually take a picture with it once it's built, right? From, from, from a Dynex network being computed. So basically miners which were mining those blocks while this was computed, they were computing the optimum positioning of those columns. That is mind-blowing. Wow, such a great use uh, purpose because there's so many cryptos out there uh, that I can't really say what they do or what problem they actually solve. So th this yeah. is exciting, man. I didn't know it was quite that detailed. So let's say that I want to do something. I want to get involved in, in Dynex in whatever way. Besides the mining part of it, how would I upload it to the Dynex system to solve some kind of problem? Yeah. So in a moment, in a moment, we are building out the Dynex ecosystem. So far, all the jobs they have to get in touch with us. We post them, right? Because we are currently still building up all the infrastructure. Uh, by Q3, Q4 later this year, we're gonna launch the Dynex marketplace. So basically. Fast forward, let's say end of the year, you have something you want to compute, you have a machine learning model you want to make better or whatever you want to do, right? We, we, we support certain types of computations. Then you go on the marketplace, you upload your, your, your problem, then you say, you know what, I want that amount of computing power for that amount of, of time. You pay with Dynex because Dynex is the utility, right? It's the, the currency basically to pay for it. And then you post it. And then if you pay, you can also define how much you pay in terms of block fee, right? Because basically miners not only receive a block reward, but they also receive a block fee of the customers, what they are paying on top of it, which makes this whole business model sustainable all the way through when all the coins have been mined. And then if you, if you pay more, you get, you, get, uh, you get processed faster. If you say, you know what, it doesn't matter, and even if it's a week, I pay a little bit of a little bit less, and then your the problem gets been run, and you can basically in your dashboard you can see what's the status, you can download the results, and everything. Wow, man, I did not think you were going to say that. So, well, I'm just my mind's blown right now. Question for somebody who doesn't know much about artificial intelligence: What would the difference between I don't know Chat GPT and Dynex be? 
So that's that's the chat GPT is, is basically a, 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 a phenomenal user interface, right? Why is chat GPT so successful? Because you can just ask questions, right? It understands you, you can describe things, right? Dynex itself is a hardcore computation platform. So you we accept industry standard formats. So that's not for the regular user yet, right? But our idea is and we actually started a couple of weeks ago into looking into it. It actually looks quite promising. Our idea is to use the chat GPT interface. Imagine that. Oh to my formulate God. to formulate your problems and then have them solved by Dynex. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So basically you could so so basically you do not need to be a mathematician or a computer expert to, to create a machine learning model or something, but you can basically define the the, the output formulation. With by simply using ChatGPT, that's basically our idea currently. No, I cannot say when it's going to be ready and, and if it's going to work as we expected in terms of, 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 of combining it. But so far, the first trials we've done, so we have already done a, a, a few problems and a few tests, which you basically you really you, you type it in, 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 in natural language into ChatGPT, comes out the problem, uh, the problem file, and we solve it and comes to, uh, as a return, you get the answer. That is mind blowing because AI is definitely not going away. You know, no, no way. And you know, you're you're forward seeing. I love what you love what you have to say about it, man. So, question back to the miners because you know my channel mostly is for mining. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think that Dynex will continue to stay proof of work, or will it ever go to proof of stake? So our model is going to continue as it is. At one point, there will be no more coins being mineable. Right, because we have a limited supply. So this is typically the time where miners rely on the transaction fees in the network. Right. And that becomes very that becomes actually the moment of truth for any coin out there. Right. If you just because if you don't have enough transactions and if you don't have enough volume, it's just not worthwhile for the miner of mining it. In our case, the miner gets the block fee. So the customer, and to the example before, right, he buys Dynex, puts them into the system and says, you know what, I'm going to put 200 Dynex per block out there, right? So the miners will get the 200, 200 Dynex per block on top of it, right? So for them, it will be a very attractive model. That's why I think proof of stake is, is in the moment not on our roadmap. We have a very clear roadmap, which is basically finishing the, the, the ecosystem end to end from marketplace to computation, to delivery, to everything, and then uh, take it from there. Hey, they're going to love to hear that. Absolutely, Subi. <laughs> so one more thing. When I first saw your website, I saw proof of useful work. I'm not really seeing that anymore. Is that still up in the air? Is that still happening? So proof of useful work, proof of work, right? What is, what is, what's the definition, right? And I think there are some players out there and everyone has its own definition of proof of useful work. I call, if you work as a miner and you calculate something useful, aka, for example, column positioning for a pedestrian walkway or whatever it is, or discovering a new medicine or something, I would call that useful work. So I would say, Dynex, in reality, at this point, is the first one who's actually doing real proof of useful work. And it's doing it not theoretically, it's actually doing it in practice. In practice. It, because I'm always asked, hey, what is proof of useful work? And I never know how to explain it. But the way you just broke it down, and no, you're actually using it for something. A use Correct. case, a use purpose. So that makes a lot, mm -hmm. more sex, a lot more sense with Dynex. And I have another question for you. So what is... I know you told us some about 2023, the third quarter and fourth quarter, but what would you say you're the most excited about in the future for Dynex? Well, the most exciting point to reach is when the whole ecosystem, the whole long tail, everything is self-serviced, right? And the marketplace is live, customers can flock in. I mean, at the moment, it's a lot of work for us to negotiate and deal and they want to do testing, etc., because we are not that known yet in the market. I mean, we are seven months old, right? Yeah. At least with the blockchain, right? I mean, research has been going on uh, way earlier. We started actually research uh, two years earlier in order to get where we are now, right? But uh, but if this is all automated, because then you get also the the price regulation, right? Because how much is is it? How much are customers willing to pay for it? 
it's going to be depending on, on on supply and demand. It's going to be very interesting to to reach a, a level of 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 size out there where you can really support really large problems. You can discover new medicines. I mean, potentially, and I'm like dreaming now, but if we succeed, and if this becomes big enough, and the, the, the GPU power is there in the world, and there's enough miners, and there's enough GPUs out there, if we succeed in what we want to do here, there will be new medicine, which has never been seen before, and there will be new discoveries, which we have never seen before, which means we as Dynex and as a community will be able to really contribute to the entire society, actually, just by mining, right? Or just by posting jobs. And that's actually a very beautiful dream to have. Hopefully, we can turn that dream into reality. That is beautiful indeed. New medicines. AI is so exciting. And wow, Dynex has really cleared this up for me. Uh, man, this is probably one of my new favorite coins. No, this this is definitely one of my new favorite coins and definitely one of the most exciting for sure. And you have officially made me a Dynex fanboy now. So Thank you so much. Thank Super. You, <laughs> so is there anything else you would like to say to the people? No, just keep just keep supporting us, you know. Just uh, respect that we're 7 months old because I mean yeah. even for me it feels like this project is 10 years old. I mean we're 7 months on the market. You're taking steps now Dynex is not a baby anymore. Dynex became a toddler because we have like professional mining software which is using us. We are embedded more and more. More and more exchanges are coming. So just be patient. We are working a lot and we're working day and night as much as we can to really build something sustainable. But this is not a coin to be getting in and out, you know, and yeah. just make, uh, make a little money on a swing. This is a, a coin which you should hold. We are trying to create value here and we are dedicated to make that happen. Thank you, Sumi. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much.